Hi, my name is Daniel Sokol. I wanted to talk a little bit today about what it's like to be a therapist in therapy, uh, what kind of worries and concerns that a therapist might have coming into therapy, and how treatment looks. Um, I often see a lot of younger grad students um, and also younger therapists uh, fresh into their careers. And some of the common worries that I see are A, the stress level of A, being in grad school and the level of work involved and the level of commitment to internships and jobs and family and balancing that. Um, the other parts are, uh, of the worries are often combined to uh, the stress that's brought up by digging through your history, which is often a part of uh, grad school papers and research. It's really exposing parts of yourself and being vulnerable. And then in terms of working with clients that sometimes bring up parts of history or reactions that cause a level of stress that's not really quite understood, but oftentimes has a much deeper meaning in terms of experiences in history or things that are brought up from past or things that feel overwhelming but aren't really understood why. Um, so one thing that kind of plays out in treatment is taking all these factors, these kinds of worries, and conceptualizing what they tie into, what they might have been triggered by, and how we can understand clients and the work we're doing to make sense of, of these affective states of minds, these feelings that are coming up, this stress, this worry, this remembering things from the past, or some of the overwhelming things that come from really sifting through history, which is often a requirement of some of the papers in, in grad school counseling and psychology programs. Um, therapy looks like a crossbreed between supervision and the therapeutic milieu. Because what happens is we're trying to conceptualize what comes up in the work, either with clients or with schoolwork, that relates to career or relates to life and one's kind of decision to become a therapist, a counselor, or a psychologist. So what's important about the work is finding the connection between the deeper meanings, the affective states, and how we can function with these kinds of stresses, the overwhelming work, the clients that sometimes raise the stress level because of the severity of their needs, the confusion of diagnostically where they lie, um, and by making sense of some of these things and bringing language to them, by bringing reason and meaning to them, we can often create a survivability that allows for room to really complete grad school or make sense of working with clients without hitting a level of burnout. There's a lot of vulnerability in becoming a patient and becoming a therapist. And one of the important things about that vulnerability is really sifting through it in an incredibly safe space. Um, oftentimes therapists are worried, if I'm going to another therapist for therapy, how does it exist outside uh, in the community? Uh, what if they end up being a teacher of mine or I do a training program where they become colleagues? And it's a really hard um, and confusing and anxiety inducing line. And the reality is, the therapeutic milieu, the therapy room, is a really, really sacred space. Confidentiality is key. And that is really, really maintained and held onto in the therapeutic room. Uh, just like in terms of uh, really good supervision, the work stays in the room unless it becomes like a write-up or a presentation that's supported by the supervisor. But it's really a sacred space for growth. Uh, and it's important that that's maintained and that's valued. Um, so if you're interested in understanding more about how kind of I think about working with uh, therapists and therapy, if you're interested in becoming a patient or looking for a presentation, don't hesitate to reach out. My website is www.danielsokal.com. That's D-A-N-I-E-L-S-O-K-A-L.com. I look forward to hearing from you. And thanks for taking the time to view my video.